Not the game from the old school Focus on break no rules Operate on my own truth I been making my own moves I keep hearing this game saying You could be the one if you so choose Not the game from the old school Focus on break no rules Operate on my own truth I been making my own moves I keep hearing this game saying You could be the one Alright guys, so uh, Fubu coming to you with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. If you uh, like this video, please feel free to like it. Um, please feel free to um, share it. And also, if you like uh, the content on this page, please feel free to subscribe to this page and um, be in the loop with new stuff that we put out. Be it about soccer be it about track and field and the numero uno be it about boxing now um it was crazy because you know i um you know for those who, who know me i'm a hip-hop head like i really like hip-hop um you know and there there is a separation of hip-hop and rap and the artists I'm about to talk about can actually do both. You know, with hip hop, I feel that your lyricism is on point. You're you're into the whole like just basically like things like break beats and stuff like that. And with rap, I feel like you know you have a a listener friendly uh, way of delivering your music. But still, it has some good content map matter that you can still be like a like successful, you know what I mean, and still bring that that heat, you know. So um, for those of the, you guys who don't know about my taste in music, you would know that like when Fabulous was first coming out, when Fabulous first came out, I was really on that dude. Okay, because for one, his albums were good. You know, he could do it all on on his on his albums. He can write rap about the gutter stuff. He can rap about the the lady stuff. He did it all, and he did it all in such a way where you're like, dang, this guy got flows. To top it all off, if you heard any of Fabulous's mixtapes with DJ Clue or DJ Envy, you will know that that dude, honestly, when it comes to freestyles, I feel like that guy, like, honestly, you know, people are gonna hate me for saying it, but he's better than Cassidy. When it comes to the freestyle, uh, the mixtape freestyles, way better than Cassidy. You know, he just, he just said some stuff. He would just always say some stuff that would have you thinking, like, oh, like, you know, and it would just be like a smooth, cold-ass delivery with it. It didn't sound like he was trying so hard when he <laughs> when he came with it. You know what I mean? Uh, and so, what, what kind of turned me off to Fabulous, though, is when, you know, like, it ain't cool, bro, man. You hitting women and crap, man. That shit ain't cool. You know, it kind of like turned me off to him. Like, I, 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 I mean, I was even messing with his more recent work too. Like, um, his mixtape series, I think it was called like um, the Summertime or something mixtape series. I, I was messing with him in that even. But then like, you know, I heard he went so hard on this, on this woman. I'm like, man, I'm cool. But you know, something else came up basically um and when i saw this song i saw indirect pan-africanism and that's what this video is about okay i did a video uh before about madonna traveling to uh i think or she may have traveled to cabo verde and she met musicians there and then she kind of like sorry to say she just kind of culture vulture i'm just gonna be real i mean i guess you can call it cultural appreciation but in my humble opinion it was culture vulture 
But anyhow, fabulous. You know, he went to Cabo Verde. And he did a song with Jeremiah. And he also did, I think he it was the uh, the artist uh, that he did it with as well was a Nigerian artist that he, like a Nigerian artist, contributed to the hook, basically. You know, he, he did the third verse in the song. And so, when I see this, I'm like, this is what, like, honestly, Pan-Africanism is looking like. Because here you have Fabulous, who's Dominican. You have Jeremiah, who's African descended from um, here, you know, United States. And then you have the Nigerian artist. And then you have him in Cape Verde doing a song, mixing with the locals, putting the locals in the video, you know? And so I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, this is what a Pan-Africanism is supposed to look like. Although it's built on entertainment, the fact of the matter is they were doing the same things. They had the same common purpose. I don't think there were any egos. And they got that thing done. And they did it in a really good way. It's a catchy song. You know, it, it, this song I'm, I'm not going to lie. This song kind of made me look past, you know, Fabulous's mishaps with his woman. You know, I, I'm, I can't even front. You know, um, now I'm looking forward to his new project. You know what I mean? So, like, with this being said, I'm just saying that, like, Pan-Africanism, like, I know people claim, like, oh, I'm Pan-African. You know, you have guys like Umar Johnson claim they're Pan-African. You have guys like Pope Polite claim that he's Pan-African. And he's for African people and all this, and they're for black people. But, you know, their, their reality is they're, they're for themselves. You know, they're really for them, like, they're for their own, like, baseless desires. They're not really for like the greater welfare of black people, you know, although they would make lead you out to believe it. That's why with me, I don't use the Pan-African badge. You know, I don't identify and say, oh, I'm a Pan-African and this, that, and the other. I don't say that, you know. Um, I just say I'm a simple African internationalist. And the reason why I say that is because, again, my dad instilled that in me early. You know, my, like, I don't want to, I can't live off the legacy of my father. I got to make my own legacy, of course. I got to carve it. But I can take lessons from his life. And his life was fulfilled with internationalism. You know, like, here's a guy who, you know, fought against cult colonialism went and got trained in Russia fought alongside Cubans established good ties with Cubans was even in the process of establishing like some grassroots with Venezuela and also was very much in tune with Grenada and their revolution and actually was, um, actually went there as a, um, basically as like an advisor. And so I look at his life and I say, okay, this is internationalism. You know, in the, in its in its cleanest form. You know what I mean? But also, without the title, it's Pan Africanism. Because as we know, in Venezuela, in Cuba, 
and uh, Grenada, although in Venezuela they won't let you see it, but the majority of the population are either like black or they have some kind of black blood in them, you know? And that goes the same with Cuba as well, right? So when you see things like this and your dad tells you these stories, it leaves an impact on you, you know? So that's why you will never hear me say the word Pan-African, like, or refer myself to Pan-African. And one of the reasons why I will never refer myself to Pan-African is because, you know, if we don't have unity in our own countries in Africa, right? How can we have unity with anybody else? And that's just the reality. You know, if we still have lackeys and opportunists who don't, who are leading the countries, who don't look out for our best interests, then how can we really say that, you know, we can do Pan-Africanism? It's just, that's, it's just that simple. It's the same with Caribbean, Latin America. You know, like, I'm sorry to say it, but like when you look at places like Venezuela, they are vilified by the majority of Latin America. So how can you like say, oh, Pan-Africanism or nothing when the, the our own countries of origin are not unified? And you, th and, and I'm, I hate to say this, but like some like Africans, be it they're from here, be it they're from continental Africa or be it they're from Caribbean, they take this like this this super like rigid stance on it and they think that if you disagree with them or something like that, you're a coon. But really you're just looking at the reality of the situation. It's not about agreeing or disagreeing with them. It's about looking at the the ground level situation, what's really going on in these places. Okay? And so, uh, I say, you know, that that fabulous video, you know, it's an example of indirect Pan-Africanism, you know, because of the simple fact that you have all those elements, you know? I mean, I don't know whose idea was it to do the video in Cape Verde, but, you know, the fact that they did it there... And the fact that there was different elements, you had a Nigerian, as I said, you had a Nigerian crooner, you had Jeremiah, and you had a BK, Brooklyn-born Dominican dude, all on one accord, and their common bomb was the music, you know? And so, with this being said, um... It can be done. That's what I'm saying. It can be done. It's just that people have to be uh, selfless. You know? People have to play their position. And I don't think that's the... I, I think that's the problem. Like, people... Like, some... Most people don't want to play their position. You know, that's the whole issue. Most people want to be seen. Most people want to, like, take credit for things. And it takes like a whole collective for something to happen. In my dad's political party, which is unfortunately right now corrupted, but the one he was a part of, the PAIGC, people played different roles. People, there were nurses, there were administrators, there were people who knew their position. But each role, if one role didn't function, the other role wouldn't function. So they knew their position. And that's why I see with that song, with The Fabulous. You know, everybody knew their position. And it turned out, and shoot, I'm not gonna lie, it got me back interested in Fabuloso. You know, because at first, I, as I said before, I was turned off by him, um, you know, hitting his wife, or whatever the case may be. And I'm still turned off at it, but I mean, I, at first I, w I was gonna boycott that nigga, but now he got me back interested. So with that being said, leave your thoughts and leave your comments. And I, I, and I, you know, it's crazy, but go listen to Choosy by Fabulous. It's actually pretty damn catchy, you know? Fool is signing out. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments. 